Son of Revelation, verse 12, 20. Uh, 20 uh, sorry, what? Revelation 20, verse 11. Verse, or chapter 20, verse 11. And I saw a great, a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Would you please be seated? Amen. This morning I have seven points to go through very quickly. Not like the man that came to church and he preached for 30 seconds. The Lord got him off to the corner and says, Pastor, why did you preach 30 seconds this morning? He says, I got in new dentures. Next week he came back and only preached a minute. What happened, Pastor? Well, my dentures haven't worn in yet. Came back the third week and he preached three hours. Now, Pastor, what happened? Well, he says, I got my wife's dentures in by mistake. The sinner, 60 seconds after he has died, is going to find out seven things. The first thing he'll find out is when it's over, it's not over. It says the books were open. And it's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. How many of you know you can't judge a corpse? It doesn't do anything to drag a body in, and then you can't do anything with a body. We will be alive again. The Bible talks about two resurrections. There's a resurrection of the damnation, of those that are damned, and those that will be the children of God. And there's a dividing point, sheep from the goats. Hell is going to be a segregated place, not by the color of your skin, but by the severity of your sin. Hell is not a pleasant place. You know, why do we get up here and talk about hell this morning? I'll tell you why I get up and tell you about hell. My wife has been burning, uh, burdened for so long. She says, honey, she says, we've got to go back. We've got to share on the subject of hell. Why? Because many people want to preach the good news, but you know what? Gloria and I preach to people all the time that have never, ever heard the bad news. Wave your hand at me if you know what a default setting is on your computer. Most of you do. Lucifer in the Garden of Eden, when, when Adam and Eve sinned, set your default setting, every human being's default setting to the pits of hell. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us has sinned and and messed up. And we inherited that in Romans 5, verse 12. It says, all men died in Adam. I always, you know, it was a great shock to me to find out. I always thought birth initiated life and death terminated life. No, the whole secret of this whole thing is, is birth initiates eternal life. What do you mean? Death is only separation. When you go to the graveyard dead, your body is separated from your spirit. Matter of fact, there's a place called departed spirits that Jesus talked about in Luke 16. The rich man Lazarus. It's a place called Sheol and Hades. And there was a great gulf fix, so the one couldn't pass from one to the other. And Lazarus screams out, or rich man screams out, send Lazarus to dip his finger and cool my tongue. Two things that the rich man wanted in hell. He wanted water and he wanted a witness. 
And so as there's when Christ died on Calvary, he took the shield side with him to heaven. Saints appeared, they're doing a mini tour of heaven, or of Jerusalem on the way through. And so now there's just the place of the, uh, the Hades left, and that's filling on a constant basis as people are dying. The way you look at this, if you're confused about Hades, and you're com confused about hell, Hades is a jail, hell is a penitentiary. Hell is for a long-term stay. Also, the 60 seconds after the sinner dies, he's going to find out everything that he's ever done is waiting for him. And since the books were open, you thought the NSA was giving, taking, keeping track of you. The book of your life will be opened at that day. And it won't be any favorites. You will be judged out of the book with your name on it. And if you're judged out of that, you know, I have a book that makes everybody's book look sick. But you know what? Jesus took care of my book. He destroyed it at Calvary. Amen. You got to know the bad news before you can enjoy the good news. The third thing that the sinner is going to find out 60 seconds after he's died that he's been lied to. How many of you know religious lies are the worst? We were at home just not long ago in Minnesota and a couple of ladies walked up to us and they says, their pastor came up and told them they don't have to do a thing to get to heaven. They must have missed John's notes when he preached repent. They must have missed Jesus' words when he says repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. How did you get this thing called death that you have? Friend, you inherited it. All men died in Adam. Not only did you inherit death, you, had, you inherited that old stinky nature that you have. Have you ever watched kids playing? No! Mine! You see that come up real quick. The fourth thing the sinner's going to find out 60 seconds after he's died, he's going to find out that he has missed the greatest thing that this life has ever had to offer. Can I tell you a real good thing that's happened this morning? Glory pointed out, the lady over here comes up to us. I came way back in Haver, Montana. She's still serving Jesus. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Friend, you can have excitement serving the Lord Jesus Christ and a reason to live. Peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. I could go on and elaborate on that. The fifth thing that the sinner is going to discover 60 seconds after he's died, he's going to discover that, that he still retains his memory. I, I made a call. We used to have a guy that traveled with us. Boy, could he sing. And I called Denny over in Indiana. I called him yesterday and I said, Denny, do I have this straight? There used to be, how many of you know, so, know there used to be a lot of evangelists coming through? There's hardly any evangelists out there anymore. But the Hart brothers were, like Johnson's, and Sam and all them, the Hart brothers would come through. But the night that Maurice Hart gave his heart and life to Jesus Christ, he was sitting next to Bonnie and Clyde. He looked at Bonnie and Clyde, are you going to come with me? They said, no, out the door they went. They made a wrong turn. Yeah. So Bonnie and Clyde will hear the drone of that organ. In the pits of hell, just as I am, without one plea. And they'll see themselves going out. Maybe you remember the preacher that talked to you. 
Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher. Maybe it was somebody in your life. Maybe it was a knock at your heart's door. God knocked at my heart's door when I was about five years old in the swing set. Where did I come from? Where are you going? How are you? All these questions you get. The Holy Spirit began to deal with me early. The sixth thing that a sinner is going to find out 60 seconds after he's died, that hell, hell is not an, a parable or an allegory. It's a live, literal, burning place. And the sixth thing, the seventh thing he's going to find out is that he's locked in with no way out. And friend, after all of that news, is there good news? Yes. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. It was never prepared for you. But you do have, God does not take prisoners. You do have the right to choose where you want to go. Do you want hell or do you want heaven? But if you want heaven, the Bible says, whosoever will call. See, my daughter, does, uh, she's in the, she travels and drives these big buses, these 40 foot, 45 foot Prevo. And once in a while, a good concert will come through and she says, Dad, go down and pick up your ticket. It's at will call. Well, your ticket to heaven is at will call this morning. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. If you don't know, you don't go. How do you know? The Bible says the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Inside of you, when you think of dying, if you think such horrible thoughts, there will be a red light or an orange light. But friend, when you come to Jesus, He gives you a green light. And friend, while we're here this morning, I'd like to know how many of you are all over this auditorium. You would bow your heads with me. And I want to know how many knowers that we have in our audience this morning. How many are knowers here this morning and say, I'm a knower. I know without a shadow of a doubt that if I would die, I'm going to heaven. Lift your hands. Can you do that? Some of you didn't lift your hand. I didn't come here to put Catholics and Methodist churches or Lutherans and Nazarene churches. I came here to tell you the good news that there's a live living hell and hell always favors the do-nothing crowd. Hell always favors the la-la-la crowd. But friend, while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, we talk about three types of commitments this morning. Those of you that need to make a first-time commitment of your heart and life, those of you that need to reaffirm those catechism, confirmation vows, first baptismal vows, those of you that need to make a private commitment, a public commitment, while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, all of you that will, will pray this simple, simple, simple prayer with me this morning. I want you to lift your hand right now. If you'll pray this prayer with me. Look at the hands going up. This is wonderful. How many of us are going to slip them up? Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father which is in heaven. How many others will slip that hand up and say, I'm going to pray this prayer with all of these others that are, going to, are lifting theirs. I want all of you that are lifting your hands to stand with our counselors this morning. If you will stand right now, quickly, please. Stand all over this auditorium, all of you that are lifting your hands. You may be next to someone. The Lord laid on your heart. They want to stand so bad that they can taste it. That's the way it was when I heard the gospel. I wanted to stand and I was too scared to do it. Then a large framed man stood to his feet. You know who that man was? It was my father. And when my dad stood up and gave me the encouragement that I could stand, all you'd have to do is reach over, not say a word, squeeze a hand, and that would say, I'm making an invitation to you. Will you stand with me? Would you do it? They're being invited this morning. Waiting on you. We talked about 60 seconds that a sinner is going to find out. 60 seconds after he's died. I'm going to hold it open for 60 seconds this morning. For those of you that are remain that are going to stand and pray with me. One minute from now we're going to pray. If you're going to stand, I'll wait a minute.
We have 45 seconds left. If you're going to stay. Some of you are standing. You can reach out and take the hand of a friend that's standing with you. Say, I'll stand with you if you'll stand with me. We now have 30 seconds before we pray if you're going to stay. We're on the last 15 seconds of this invitation. God bless them. They're standing. They're standing. I'm thankful for that. All over the South Carolina, all of you that are standing, would you step out and come on down for this prayer, please? Come on down for this prayer. Stand across the front. I don't want any of you looking at these who are coming forward and thinking your minds. I wonder if these are good or bad people. These are wonderful people. Have you done this before? Done this before? First time. You ever done this before, buddy? First time. You ever done this before? Yes. Man, you ever done this before? No? This is first time. Wonderful. This is wonderful. This is this is what trips our trigger. This is what keeps us going. People coming to, into God's house. And giving their hearts and lives to Jesus. Guess what's going to happen to your sin this morning? He says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your book is going to be destroyed. The book that waits for you on Judgment Day won't be there. Your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Whose ever name was found written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you don't have to worry. Friend, Jesus has taken upon Him your sin. Let's pray this prayer out loud. Can we do that as I lead you in this prayer of commitment? Will you pray this prayer from your heart and mean it? You can pray it right where you're seated, but there's a hook with it. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let's pray this prayer out loud as I lead you in this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning. In Jesus' name, confessing my sins. I have sinned, and I cannot save myself. I denounce the devil. He's a liar, a cheater, a deceiver. I want nothing to do with him. So I opened up my heart to you, God. It's dirty on the inside. Satan has corrupted it. But Lord, you're going to restore it this morning. You're going to give me a new heart. Your name, my name's going to be written in your Lamb's Book of Life. And I thank you for it. And I'm going to serve you with my whole heart. In Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. We have some, our altar workers. If they're coming, we want, to speak, we want to spend about five minutes with you. If we can get you to go through this doorway, we're going to give you a little booklet. Have a word of prayer with you. Follow to the right quickly as you go this way. Give them a great hand as they go to the counseling area.